Right, well it's uh, Sunday morning and I'm here at Alexandra Palace and there is a lovely snooker table over my shoulder but I'm not here to, um, to look at the uh, green bays I'm here for the model engineering exhibition Two things I know about Ali Pally and coming to the model engineer show is start early, so you park on top of the hill rather than right at the bottom and second, get an advance ticket because the queues are massive The show takes place in the main hall at Alexandra Palace with over 50 clubs and 2,000 models on display. One of the uh, things that was advertised heavily this year was the inclusion of a steampunk display by the Ministry of Steampunk. Now, if you don't know what steampunk is, essentially it's reimagining the world as though electronics never happened and everything's done by Victorian style stuff. As you can see, some of the costumes are breathtaking. Um, most of us don't have costumes that work. Or how about this, a Meccano representation of your internal organs, complete with heart and intestine. Um, we see a fairly famous droid here, re recreated in wood, and perhaps something from the uh, British space program, or at least the British space program should be. This uh, model shows the uh, first landing on Mars, again really showing that Victorian aesthetic going on here, you might recognise it from the first Men in the Moon film. Sci-fi modelers often use railway bits such as the uh, air bits gantry or even a pug in this display. Cracking painting as well for that fake bronze effect. One of my favourite things about the ME show is that it's a multidisciplinary event so you get to see lots and lots of different types of model making on display. How about this, in the corner, you can't really fly normal model aircraft but this is 3D flying with uh, very flat foamies, massively overpowered with their uh, lipos and brushless motors and therefore they can operate in a very very tiny space, basically hanging on the uh, propeller. Chelmsford Model Engineering Society stand won the prize this year for the best exhibit. As you can see, it's huge and absolutely packed with really heavy uh, models. It took a day to set up. Here we are, three versions of the classic live steam locomotive design Titch, um, each of which is quite a handful on its own. Or how about this, a row of stationary engines, or crashing away. Now that's all they're all powered by air that's coming up through the middle onto the turntable and the turntable is surrounded by a 16 millimeter scale uh, railway. At the end of the stand we have a funicular. Now this thing's over six feet tall and made out of Meccano, a good traditional uh, material for model engineers and uh, one that we'll see an awful lot more of later on in the show. Go to celebrate the uh, 50th anniversary of the moon landings and the Kano lunar module. And of course, we've got to finish off on my favourite loco of all time, which is the Opal Row Industrial Garret. Now, I said model engineering clubs covered an awful lot of uh, disciplines. Well, here we have a 112 scale Dolls House. Many model engineering projects take several years to complete. We uh, first saw this. Uh, live steam seven and a quarter inch gauge USA big boy last year and it's made quite a bit of progress there's now two power bogies and a cab to look at but what a project a slightly more modest project is this five inch gauge Dougal which has been serialized in engineering and miniature magazine now I'm a bit of a big kid and when I was a kid Lego was my thing so I'm always pleased to see that um, Apples or adult fans of Lego get to display their models at the engineering show as well. This machine here is an incredible sort of crowdsourced device. 
where lots and lots of people have come together to build a modular device for moving balls along a track. And there's basically a set of standards that the uh, machines have to adhere to, basically getting the uh, balls in and out of them, so that they can all be placed next to each other uh, to produce this uh, most incredible looking system. The balls make it through the machine, moving from one end of the table to the other, and then are loaded into the little train, which deposits them back at the other end of the machine, ready to carry on their journey all over again. The first time I saw radio controlled trucks on this sort of scale was actually in uh, Germany, uh, where it's a very big thing. Tanya Trucking now, as it's called, uh, or at least the display team call themselves, nowadays build one of these enormous road systems and drive fully functioning radio controlled trucks and diggers and grabs around the hall, moving the earth. Uh, if you're interested, I believe the kit for one of these trucks will cost you something north of a thousand pounds by the time you've got all the bells, whistles, lights and noises in it. I didn't spend a lot of time looking at model boats this year because to be honest a lot of them were models I'd seen before but the junior modeler stand uh, had got some really impressive craft on display by you know, youngsters getting into the hobby. The other area that was really interesting was the novelties and what we call plastic magic models. These are plastic kit boats that are fitted out with miniaturised radio control gear. Quite a challenge as uh, these models are often quite heavy and very short of space inside. But work is a real art. We finish up with the uh, large scale model railways and we start off with the Gauge 1 Association Invicta test track. Now this is really simple stuff, a couple of loops, lots and lots of steam engines charging around all day. And to help you know what's going on, the great thing about the Gauge 1 guys is they put up a board telling you at what time different locomotives will be running. So you can keep an eye out and think, oh I'll come back for that one, so if you want to see the ferry, you know when it's going to be on the track. The 16 mil scale Indian Hill Railways is always a crowd pleaser. The, the locomotives are all coal fired and very very rarely clean so you get that proper dirt look, look on a loco. And you get great scenery on the layout too such as bridges and colourful buildings all right for the location. We finish up with the Buckinghamshire Garden Railway Society's White Leaf Light Railway. Now this is another very popular and regular attender at shows. Uh, basically G-scale or L mostly LGB rolling stock running around, although those are Accucraft coaches and uh, a live steam loco. The impressive thing about this really, aside from its size, is the overhead which must take an almighty amount of time to put together but it seems to run reliably although the locos aren't powered from the uh, overhead wire. Handy little ex Fowler rail car there with a the new chassis. I must admit I've got one of those stashed away to do. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed my whistle-stop tour of the London Model Engineer Exhibition 2019.